hey what's up coders welcome back to my channel in this video i'll be talking about a very cool interesting widget which is called the chip widget and uh, to talk about a chip widget it's it's very simple it's only used to represent your data and performs few actions on it now for example uh, if you're from an android background you would have seen that we use check boxes drop down switches to represent some kind of data so that the user interacts with it and selects the data so similar way a chip is also another way of representing your data so depending on the use cases we have different types of data like we have filter chip choice chip action chip and input chip so if you look at this uh, video i'll be covering about the filter and the choice chip and in my another second video i'll be covering about the action and the input chip so without a further ado let's start working on the filter chip so i'll show you the emulator here which i have the filter chip demo so it's your it's purely a simple page where um, you've given an option to the user where you can select few options from a set of data say for example if a person is looking for a house and he has a lot of requirements or options to select say example do you want an elevator or washer dryer so in this case, uh, if you think about a drop down, you have to, it gets really complicated. I think using the chip in these kind of scenario is the best way of um, driving customers attention or users attention. It's very easy to use also. So if you click on this, say for example, morning side heights, you could see that it gets checked. So this way you are able to track the user's interaction. So you filter chip is basically used to filter from a set of data so that's the basic intention of a filter chip so we'll see how to work on this um, so let me clear the template and we will start working on the filter chip all right so regarding the implementation part first let's look at the layout it's a simple app bar with a column widget so all I've done is I've used two columns. So the first column is with the first data and the second one is with the neighborhood. Now inside this, I'm going to show you how to create this um, filter chip. So since I've covered the app bar and the combination of column and row widgets, I'm not going to concentrate on the UI part. So it contains the app bar here um, and the, with the text filter result. And then it's a column widget with the title and then I've used a wrap so that I can uh, uh, so that it does not overflow all my chips do not overflow on the right so that with its it gets shifted to the next car uh, next line uh, with a spacing and run spacing so you know what's spacing it's the space between your chip and run spacing is the spacing between your um, first level and the second level chip so the spacing and the spacing is your um, spacing and run spacing is all about so to define the chip I know I'm going to use a collection of chips here I've defined a custom widget so and I've named it as a filter chip widget. if you see here I've defined it as a stateful widget so that I can pass the name of the chip inside it with a label or parameter called chip name so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that widget here and then I'm going to pass uh, the parameter name which would be the name of my widget so this is one efficient way of creating your chip so that you don't have to recreate the code again and again for individual chip now if you come to my filter chip it's nothing but a stateful widget and it uses the parameter chip name and here I have defined a variable is selected false just to ensure that if I've ticked the chip or not to keep track of it now here is where we're going to define our filter chip now to define the filter chip all you have to do is type in filter chip that's the widget for the filter chip and the rest all is the property so it is that simple to define a single filter chip now first thing what do you require you require a text to be displayed inside it so for that we'll use label and uh, the name of the chip would be since i'm using it as a parameter i would use it as a widget dot chip name it's the same name that i'm passing next 
Um, okay, there are a couple of other mandatory properties like on selected so that we know what is happening when you select the chip. So first thing what I'm going to do is on selected. Um, first, I'm going to define a couple of properties of the chip so that I get the desired chip that I'm looking for. I'm going to add a label style so that you can add some styling to your uh, chip like the text color, the font, like how you do for your text property. So similar way you could add some custom styling for your label. Then I'm going to use selected property and I'm going to say initially as not selected so that all my chip looks that they are not selected. This is not selected and this is the one that's selected. So initially I want all my chips to be not selected. Then Moving on to the background color, I can also define a background color and I have a custom color defined for it. So I'm going to use that property here. Okay, that's my background color. Now what's the required property? It's called the on selected. And for this, I'm going to pass the variable. Um, I'm going to use on selected. And inside this, I'm going to create my on uh, I'm going to use my set state so that I can keep a track of my selections. So let me define that part. Okay, there you go. Okay. And also you have another property which is called the selected color. The moment you select your chip, you want a different color to be displayed. Definitely it is possible using the selected color property. So for that, I'm going to give another custom color. Okay, there you go. So we do, we have defined the basic uh, properties for a chip, but definitely you can explore more of it by looking into the documentation like this, like you can have a uh, pressed elevation, disabled colors, tool tip, shape, clip behavior, padding. So there are a lot of other properties also. Please uh, feel free to explore this. And uh, if you come up with some nice designs and cool looking ideas, please do share it also. So we have defined the first chip, uh, which is the elevator. So let's do a hot restart and see how it looks like. There you go. The chip has built here. And uh, when I click on the chip, you can see that it displays with a tick and it displays the um, uh, color also changes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another chip. And I'm just going to change the... Uh, text of the chip to saying uh, fireplace okay I'll just say fireplace and then let's do a hard restart and there you go so you have two chips available now and when I click on fireplace it gets selected and I can disable it also similar way I can select both of them also so this is about filter chip and um, next we will move on to the choice chip. So let me clear the template and we will start working on this choice chip. All right. So now moving on to the next chip, which is called the choice chip. Now, if you look at a choice chip, it's nothing but you have a set of data available and you have to choose a particular chip or a particular data. So in those kind of scenarios, you would use a choice chip. Um, to cite you with an example, you have a product, like say if you're uh, using an e-commerce app and you're selecting a particular um, outfit or a shoe, what you would do is you would have an option to select the size. So definitely you will not select all the shoe sizes. Definitely you're going to select only one. So in those kind of scenarios, you would use a choice chip. Or for example, as cited in this emulator, you could see that um, it's basically finding a synonym of a particular word. Here you would not use all of them. You want to choose only a particular option. So for that reason, definitely you would use a, a choice chip. So in this case, I cannot use a filter chip because I don't want to opt for all the options. I want to select only one particular option. So in this case, if you look at the meaning of the word, it's skilled. So when I select the word, I'm going to highlight only one. So this is basically a kind of a quiz app or a flashcard where you're going to select only a particular one option 
and then move on to the next one. So in those cases, we use a choice chip. So the difference between the choice chip implementation part is exactly the same. The only difference is I had to change the name of the chip. The rest all remains the same. But if you look at the properties, they do have a couple of other properties. No, I think most of them are same. It's just that the behavior is choice chip and uh, you do not get that tick mark here. All you get is the chip getting highlighted. Yeah, it's just the chip getting highlighted. So if you look at the implementation part, I've used a similar way like the filter chip and I've created the chip details here and with the material design. And then I have used this uh, chip which is placed in a wrap uh, widget so that it's placed one after the other and and so that it does not overflow here and it comes on to the next line. And then for the widget I have used, for the chip widget I have used the choice chip. So the only difference is the name in the chip. So yeah, so, so that's it for this video. So we have learned about the filter chip and the choice chip. So using the chip is very, implementing this chip is very simple. Uh, you need to understand your use case before you choose your chip. So make sure that um, filter is used when you have set of data and you got to choose um, multiple choices. And choice chip is when you want to choose a single choice with, uh, in a set of data. So yeah, that's it for this video. So I hope you like it. If you do, please give it a like and subscribe. And if you find this informative, please do share it. Thank you.